All right, all right. What is going on, everyone? Happy Sunday night live stream number two on the day. So let me get myself out of the way here. Um, we are going to be going over a bunch of stocks we're watching for the coming week. Top stocks we are watching. Uh, I did a live earlier, and I talked about in the first like five minutes risk management and entries. So I wanted to talk about now some exits. So real quick before we dive in, before people jump in, because these videos will stay back up on the channel, I want to go over like some exits while we're giving people a few minutes to jump in. Um, and you know, I wanted to do that first because I got some questions in some recent videos about exits. So what I'm going to do as of right now, futures are green. We'll talk about that in a second, um, what that means potentially for the upcoming week, the overall market. But what I want to do first, uh, and I want to actually, I have a request here for IN. Uh, VO, but I want to use this as a good example to talk about exits. So when I enter a stock, when I exit a stock, right, these are key, right? Obviously, if you're going to be entering and exiting, that is going to ultimately determine how much you can make on a stock and your average, right? That determines everything. So if you're just blindly buying a stock and it's a long-term investment and the stock steadily grinds over time, that's fine. It doesn't really matter when you buy. If you're buying index funds, you know, you're good. But when it comes to trading more actively, you know, and especially small caps and pennies, you gotta have an idea of where you wanna set your exits and entries. So we talked about entries this morning, and what I would say for an entry, we look at this stock right here, we see it's holding up around three bucks and it dropped down to about two dollars and ninety cents. So what is my plan if I'm looking to enter this stock this week, which actually looks pretty good. 50 SMA right here on the daily chart, the one uh, year, one day, each of these candles is one day. A breakout over that 50 SMA could send it up. Um, we have a gap down or we have some, you know, a, a pretty big move down. It's kind of been steadying out. I haven't looked too deep into what's going on behind the scenes. I'm just looking at the chart. But if I'm just specifically looking at the chart here, I'm buying this stock in a range and I'm gonna use like this little rectangular box as kind of my buy range. Here's your buy range, right? I don't wanna hold, I don't wanna have this stock go below that 290. But that said, here's my buy range, and I'm going to be buying more, of course, as lower in the range I can get. So I'm averaging into the position. Every situation is different. Let's say the stock was trading up here at like 340, and I didn't want to miss the run. Maybe I buy, you know, a, a, a portion of my position right here at 340. And then it comes back down. Okay, I'll buy it down here, right? And I'm buying and I'm averaging in, right, to overall lower my cost basis, lower my average. But now for selling, where do you look to, right? So for many plays, it'll be more clear. This is not a, you know, very, very, it's not a perfect um, example because we kind of have some some wonkiness in the chart. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest. I don't know the background behind this play. But if I'm looking at this play and I'm saying, okay, for me, what works for me for a lot of penny stocks is I start scaling myself out 20, 30, 40% up, right? When I'm up that much. Now, some people that's that's ridiculous, but for my swings, I'm not entering a stock that I don't see that has upside of over 25%. So I'm looking at entering here downside risk, you know, a couple cents, 20 cents, 30 cents downside risk. Okay, so I wanna see upside potential here at least 50, 60, 70 cents. And so now we're looking at three bucks right here. We're sitting at around three bucks. So I'm looking to potentially look for scaling out points. I would look to about four. We have a lot of chart range. Now this chart could be you know wonky for whatever reason, but I'm looking back to the left and I see chart history. I see the stock was trading at least you know based on the chart was up here. I'm looking to start scaling this guy out probably up around four dollars. Maybe maybe it's 350, 375. Uh, and the reason why I like to use 50s, 75s, and fours is because every 25 cents you'll generally see those are areas that'll act as resistance in a lot of penny stocks. And so um, really quick, another one of those stocks, OVID is a perfect example. I'm gonna share you know how I how I'm gonna go about this trade, how I intend to go about this trade. So I'm buying this thing down to the trend line. Uh, I'll even buy it if it cracks below the trend line. 225 is my low. I will not buy this. I will not hold this guy below 225. And I'm looking for my first sell point to be right here before this gap. This will be will probably be resistance. I've been seeing you know similar patterns patterns setting up recently. So right up around here, where is this? This is at like 328. This line, this prior kind of point where we have this gap down. So I'm selling at 325. I'm going to be selling before 325. Sometimes 323. You know, around that level. And so that's my first target. Then we get to the gap. And then things could kind of get interesting that I'm looking for maybe, you know, every 25, 50 cents, depending upon price action and volume. And maybe I'm looking up here, if it thing really gets going, we have a consolidation, you know, support, you know, right up around five. 
maybe five bucks. If it gets into the gap, it has a press release, maybe five bucks, which also five bucks lines up to be a traditionally strong area of resistance in a lot of penny stocks. Five bucks, boom, that's a solid area to be looking to sell. So that's kind of how I go about my sells. Uh, I'm looking to prior areas of support resistance. And as the stock moves up, prior area of resistance becomes new support and, this, and, and you know vice versa, kind of you know flip side. Um, so that, that's what I'm kind of doing on my scaling out phase. Uh, and then if I don't really, if I can't identify an area, like I can't look to the left and say, okay, you know, for example, OVID, uh, maybe I can't, maybe a play is different. I can't say 325 is an area. Maybe I'm looking to scale out every whole dollar, you know, $3, 350 4 bucks, and I'm just scaling a piece of my, you know, a chunk of my shares out. And if the volume comes in, if the volume continues to come in, you know, and if we're, we're up trending, then I'll, I'll take that. So that's what I'll, that's what I'll personally be doing. Um, Archon has took off. Let's take a peek at Archon. Now I'm going to dive through a bunch of, of what we're looking at for this week. Just like kind of a brief, you know, and I'm going to probably make some more, you know, updated kind of video processes, I guess, on that. Archon has been pushing up off this balance on the 50 SMA. So it had this little run right here on the 10th, on the 9th. And then, it, you know, what you'll see is once you're over that 50 SMA, it's pretty strong support and it bounced right off that level. So um, it looks good. And it looks like it may want to make a shot up here towards uh, making runs that, eight, you know, 283 bucks. You know, would not be surprised. Uh, APXT, let's take a peek. Uh, I'm not in APXT. I know a lot of people who have been... Um, who've been talking about it, putting in higher lows. It's still looking good. I mean, we're putting in higher lows. So what do we have, right? Push up here, came down higher low at 1450, push up and did make a higher high, but you know, almost like a double top. So around seven, you know, almost 18, that's a pretty strong resistance. Um, but now we're kind of slowing down. It looks like it's trying to potentially put in a reversal um, right around this 1550, but again, higher low. So this 14, you know, 40 area was support. Now 15, that's good. We're putting in continuously higher lows. I'm mean, gonna see if we can put a trend line in. I'm curious to see if we can roughly, yeah, roughly can put in a, a trend line. You know, it's not perfect, but there you go. Uh, and a lot of time put these SPACs, the 50 SMA becomes good support as well. So on the daily chart, that could be a good a good spot to look to as well. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, DPW is one that I got, um, I've been looking at. I was gonna take a stab at it, but I didn't didn't take it on uh, on Friday. I was looking at this area right here, if we zoom in, and it's like right around this 485-ish support. We have a bunch of wicks down, you know, and it has that charging aspect as well. So I, I think DPW is still putting in higher lows and maybe making a run. It wants to make a run, you know, to potentially take a shot at these highs um, from a couple months back, which would be interesting. So I, I kind of like that setup. Um, entry wasn't perfect for me, so I didn't take it. And I was in a bunch, I mean, I'm, I'm already in enough things. Um, there's, there's plenty of stuff. Um, APTX, APTX, APTX. What is this guy looking like? Uh, uptrending, uptrending guy right here. We have a pop to 650 ish. Um, if it comes down, down a little bit more, I mean, I would actually, it's not a bad play at all. Um, it looks like it's in this kind of this range right here. So we had this spike. I'm not sure what that specifically was, but because I mean, it's probably, it was probably news obviously, but because of that, that gives us some range. So down in here toward the bottom where it's been, so maybe like 350-ish. If it comes down under 375, that could be a better spot. If it, you know, doesn't hold four, that, that looks like a decent entry point, at least I would say, um, for that. AKBA, someone mentioned AKBA. Um, I like that one because it's been it's been quiet though. It's been this this is going to be a different type of um, this is not going to be your low float. It's going to move in two seconds because it's it's starting to grind up, which I like on Friday a nice little push, but it's still in a nice range. I mean it, under this 380 area is, is still like a decent buy point in my opinion. Of course, if you've got entries down under three bucks, I mean you're looking gold right now. But let's pull up um, Finviz AKBA. Uh, where is it? Finviz. Um, Pull this bad boy up. Reason why I like it, or reason why it's not going to move, you know, crazy, you know, fast, is because your float is 142 million. So that's a pretty, you know, thick stock. It's going to be, which is good. So if you're, if you like this setup and you like it, you can size in. You can be pretty confident, right? If you do your due diligence, you can be pretty confident in this thing not going down to like two bucks in like a day, because um, it's, it's, it's not a, a super low float, so it's not going to be as volatile. And so you can play this thing, you know, hold a, a decent chunk of shares and look for like a longer term swing. That's what it kind of looks like. The reason why is because this thing gapped out, uh, probably bad news at the time. I, I don't remember exactly, um, but it's probably bad news. And this thing gapped down in September, but ever since September, it's been kind of in this range from like two bucks up towards 384. So it's been in a pretty wild range. Eventually, we're going to see a range break to the upside or downside. It looks like it's going to go upside and based on the pattern of a lot of stocks, 
right now, this is a pattern break to the upside that I would anticipate. So over four bucks, this thing gets going and it's into the gap. And I mean, you really don't need that much remove. You need like a one, two dollar move for you to make a, a good chunk of change and, and, and be, be good on this play. Of course, obviously, if you have more, um, you know, conviction behind the trade, then, you you know, there's people who will hold this thing for a lot more. But the way that I do it is I don't I, I don't marry these things. I just trade them. So. The setup looks good to me, technically speaking. I look a little bit into the fundamentals, cash, standing. Do they have an S3 on file? Uh, are we at risk of an offering here? How does the chart look? And many times, you know, there will be offerings that got you down here. So many times the risk of an offering is a lot lower when you're already down, bottomed out like this. That's why I like these plays. But also a short float percentage of 20%. So that's a pretty, you know, decent percentage of shorts that are in this stock, which could cause a squeeze. Like we've been seeing with a lot of stocks recently, GameStop, even like BlackBerry, people talking at AMC, right? Right. So uh, with that, I mean, I could see this thing making a, a nice little move in the coming uh, days and weeks. Um, that aside, though, what is the overall? Let's take a peek at the overall market. What's that guy looking like? Because, I mean, we have futures. We were down on Friday. Not too bad, but we were down. And, and it's it's I, I really think we're going to get to a period right now, especially kind of um, after, as this kind of we've moved on to past the inauguration and stuff. I think we're in a period where uh, until we get some kind of Fed, you know, rate decision or we get something like that, um, we're going to be kind of in a slower period, I think, in terms of these drastic up and downs. I don't think we're going to get massive runs to the upside or to the downside. I just don't think that that's going to happen. We need some type of other catalyst at play. Um, so we're kind of just grinding up, dip, potentially a nice dip buy on Friday for a lot of plays because futures are green. So what do we have? Um, up about a quarter, tech's up. So NASDAQ's looking like it's up about a half percent. Small cap's up a half percent. VIX is going to be down a little over 1%. This is, this is just futures as of right now. So this could change overnight, but um, there's not too much going on really to change this, in my opinion, unless we get some kind of news that we weren't expecting, uh, obviously, which is always a risk at any point. Um, let's see. Let me go back through some of the comments. I'm sorry if I missed some of the comments. I'm going to start going back through. APRE, I actually am in that, I think. Let me see. What am I in? Uh, let me go back. I think I'm in APRE. Where is it? Yeah, I'm in APRE. I like this one a lot. A very similar setup. I mean, gap down, uh, bad data, and then boom. Here here we are. We're, we're going to make a push. If we get over the 675, over 7 bucks. This thing, like APRE is one of those stocks, technically speaking, can go to 10 bucks and no one care. Like, not you know, in a sense where like it could go to 10 bucks without any news, any like real like catalyst to push it to 10 bucks, like that anyone really sees on the surface. Um, it could go to 10 bucks and that would put it like right here you know, based on the chart. And, and it's still down, you know, massively from where I was trading, like literally like a month and a half ago. So that's why I like this setup. Um, it's a, it's just been kind of putting in higher lows lately on the, you know, shorter term time scale. So I like this one as a solid swing, in my opinion. Um, ADMP was one. ADMP, people have been asking about the problem with ADMP in my eyes is that it's already up huge. I don't play those. Um, just because the risk reward here, I, I just have, I've audited my own trading and I just, I don't do well with something up here. It just doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make sense. So we had this drop. I was actually in ADMP holding like this 68, 69 area. I was in it. It drops down to 40 cents. I actually exited like 47 on that drop um, and then didn't get back in. I kind of wanted a clean slate. Mentally, it was kind of a draining, you know, thing. So I just wanted a clean slate. There's plenty of other plays. So I took the loss, but ideally what I should have done is, is given a day or two average down, bought at 40. Uh, and then within like two weeks, this thing was up over 55. And within, you know, two months, the thing's up over two bucks. So that thing crushed it. Um, short squeeze set up on a go, go. Actually, I was trying, I was going to go look at this one. Um, I didn't look at it yet. So here's GoGo. Um, this is actually setting up. I mean, it's consol It's had this consolidation phase, but it's kind of pressing upon the top, uh, the top end of this range. And let's take a peek at Finviz as to why we may see a, a short squeeze here. Pull this bad boy up. Yeah, like it's in this kind of range. You know, higher lows being put in, higher highs being put in. So it looks pretty bullish to me. Um, Forty. Oh, this is a beautiful short squeeze candidate. Forty million in float. Um, so it's a fairly low float stock, although the price of the stock is higher, right? So again, take that into account. 40 million float means that's how many shares are available to trade. So obviously when there's a 40 million float for like a $2 stock, that's going to be different from a 40 million float with a $12 stock. Um, but still that said, uh, enough volume doesn't really matter. We get the volume, we see, you know, you, you get some crazy volume days and we started to see the past couple of you know, weeks, we started to see a little bit of volume perking up. Um, this one could be a play. I could make it, this thing with a 44% short 
that's pretty significant. Um, it doesn't take much for those shorts to have to cover. Uh, and so this thing can make a run to 15 plus pretty easily, I would think, if we continue to see this short squeeze theme, you know, running through the rest, you know, through this week. And we'll see. I think it's going to be interesting to see waking up what happens with GameStop, with, with GME come tomorrow morning, what happens with AMC, BlackBerry. Those are like the three that at least have been perking up a lot. Fubo is another one. Let's take a peek at Fubo. Um, I actually wanted to get into Fubo, but I didn't want to tie up as much cash. I'm waiting on cash in my longer term swing account. And so that's where I would have taken it. Um, and I missed, I kind of missed it. So reason why Fubo has a 65% float short. I mean, that's nuts. Uh, obviously Fubo sub 30 was a beautiful buy and now it's probably going to go 40 plus, you know, I think pretty quick. I think this would be a $50 stock very soon. Um, whether you like it or not, that's just kind of the market we are in, honestly. So um, let me go back and through some of these stocks. C-O-U-V. Let's pull this bad boy up. I've actually been seeing this one a couple times um, in comments and things like that. So a beautiful actually Friday. It did beautiful on Friday. So it had this period right here where it kind of came down. Here is your kind of buy area. It was, it's, it was sometimes it's tough to see, but here's your kind of buy range right down in here. Um, that was at least a solid area to be buying some of these candles down support, pretty strong support around 20, just over 25 cents. Uh, and then boom, you know, pops on up. So I would want to see if this thing can clear out over 50 cents and over 55 for a move higher. I don't know enough about the company. So um, I can't tell you, you know, <laughs> fundamentally why, you know, I like it, but uh, I kind of like it, the chart setup looked good. Now, if you get a continuation, just be careful that you are up a decent amount on Friday already. So um, that's kind of how I see it. Um, I know people have been asking about BIOL. Um, I, I know, I think they had no reverse stock split um, news as well last week, um, finished out the week. It's been pushing up a lot. I don't know, man. I I think the, 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 the thing that's happening in this market is that we're seeing a lot of these stocks. I traded this stock. I mean, I have all these lines in here from past trades. I mean, I traded this stock in the past many times, um, you know, the past like, you know, 15 months, whatever it was. Who knows why? I mean, back in back in like the spring period. Um, and then it kind of came down. A lot of these stocks are kind of just grinding up and running. And you know, the the reality is that a lot of them, you know, a lot of the valuations, they don't make any sense. Now, I'm not saying that they have to make sense because I don't really care. To be honest, I trade what's in front of me. I don't really care. Um, if, if the volume is there and the price action is there, yeah, I mean, it's going to probably go. Um, but these, the risk on this, the risk reward, I mean, if you got to identify what works for you and what's, you know, what makes sense. If you like to play long term, understand this, though, is that I think we've been seeing, we've been seeing a lot of these stocks, whether it's just the age that we're in, the social media era and whatnot, a lot of these stocks, um, you know, it's like they're all long-term play. Like, I don't know. I mean, a lot of these penny stocks are not going to be, they're not going to make it long-term. Like 95% are not going to make it long-term. They're going to do the same cycle. They're going to repeat the same process. So just understand that. So you're, you're playing a little risky of a game. I think $1, would, I would want to see $1 hold here. If not, maybe it comes down to 80, 80 cents. It puts in a higher low before 80. Um, that's just at least my take on it. Um, it would have to break out of this little kind of downtrend roughly for a bigger move in my opinion. Um, CRSR, uh, let's take a peek. I'll take a peek at CRSR. This actually looks good. I like this one a lot. This is actually, I was thinking I was looking at it recently. Here's like the range that we're kind of in this consolidation range right here. So between 40, you know, three and down towards like 33. So a $10 range, but the volume came in a big volume day on Friday. We haven't seen that in a while. Actually, this is one of, if not, this is the largest volume day we've actually had. Um, on the history here, over 10 million shares traded, you know, for this stock. It's a decent play. And I like, you know, the, the, I actually, I like this stock a lot. So for those who are looking at this, this is in a decent spot, a decent buying, you know, area. I think this is going to make a breakout. This is probably, this is a bull, I'm a bullish on generally the sector in general for the coming years, years, not just like right now. Um, so ultimately it's got to push up over this 45 for a run back up to highs. But again, it was, it was a decent dip by on Friday. Of course, had a really good day. Would not be surprised to see the continuation to this week, especially how we're looking to start the week green. Um, so that's looking really good. Appreciate the donations, guys. SOS, worth a look. Solid short squeeze. Let's take a peek at SOS. Um, this is one too that um, I think recently had a pop, but we, pop, we, we dropped right down to the 50 SMA and the 200 SMA, the, the, the uh, moving average those areas on the daily chart, they're sitting right here at like just under two bucks. So this has solid, solid support based on the bounce we just had on Thursday down to 190 and then it bounced. And then we have those moving averages right there. 
solid. And we, okay, we have a, a prior move to over four, right? So we have that range, right? Chart wise, we have a, a double, right? Potentially, right? This stock could double because it has that history. Um, let's look back to what the chart, yeah, it's got 36% uh, short. Now, the reason why I will say is because when a lot of these stocks spike, what happens is what does everyone do? right? Traders who've been doing this stuff for a long time, they, they pile in, they may play the stock long, but meanwhile, they're playing the stock long, but they're, re they're reserving shares to go short at the end of the day or come lunchtime, right? They're, they're reserving shares to ultimately go short and take this thing right back down to where it was or, or to a degree. That's how a lot of these day traders, a lot of people, you know, who are more experienced, who have got a lot more, you know, money and a lot more experience on the line, they make money both ways. They don't care. You know, they'll, they'll run it up during the day, volumes there and then they'll come back and, cr and bring it, you know, crashing down, you know, the next day or that afternoon. Um, so that's what happens there. They may have done so. The thing is the stock is back to two bucks. So at some point they got to cover uh, or, you know, at some point, you know, if enough buying volume comes back in, they're going to be forced to cover those shorts for those who are even taking this thing short, even right here kind of makes absolutely no sense to go short right here. I, I just don't see why you would be going short at support lines. Um, you wanna be going short at resistance, not at support, but that's that's you know that's a whole other story. So I, I like that. I actually like that play for this week. Potentially could be a, a really nice one. Um, let's see. Um, let me go back through. ADMP, I, I, it's just up a lot, to be honest. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of it up, up here. It could go for a lot more but I'm just not, not a big fan. SPACs, I do like SPACs. The, the, my favorite one, honestly, and, and, and as much as like there's been a hype about it, is COLV, Clove, Clover Health. The thing is, let's go to Weeble and, and, and check out um, the chart on it because I think it's a little bit, I like looking at Weeble for my charts. I mean, I, I, I like, Finvis is great to get a good sense of the, some of the stats behind it. But okay, COLV is sitting right here. We have support right around this 1325. Why is that an interesting area? Well, look back to the left. It was a prior area right in here that we popped up to when there were some speculation rumors, whatever it was back in the day. Um, so this is going to be an area. If we do fall below, yeah. Could it come below? Sure. Could it? Yeah, sure. Uh, but I think fundamentally, this is actually, you know, this is a spec that's going to be um, a big, I think that this is, this has got, you know, multiple hundred percent move, you know, in, in the carts and not just like tomorrow, this week, months down the road, years down the road. It may not just happen overnight, but I think a longer term play, this is one of those IRA plays. This is one of those long-term accounts, swing accounts, whatever you want to do Buy a chunk that you're fine with losing, obviously like, you know, like anything else. What I'm going to do once I have some more cash available in my long term, I have it in my short term um, and I'll probably write it up. If we get a pretty nasty, you know, pretty big move to 25 plus in a short period of time, I'll probably take some profits. Do I think it's going to go further? Yes, but I'll take those profits and then reallocate into something else. But then I'll hold some in a longer term account just and not worry about it. Look, that's kind of how I'm going to play it. So I like this one. There's a bunch of other ones. GHIV, uh, I think now it's uh, UM and WC or something or UWMC. Um, yeah, UWMC, um, United Wholesale Mortgage. This is a stock that's sitting right at the 50 SMA, had some kind of crazy dips under 11. I mean, look into what they're doing, look into their revenue, look into their profit, look, look into their numbers. I mean, this is a billion, they're doing billions of dollars in, in, in revenue at least. Um, you know, this is, this is not just like your kind of speculative EV company that, you know, as much as I say, right, as much as I said, I liked Fisker. I mean, some of these other companies have significantly more numbers already on the table to back them up than Fisker, which has cars in 2022. So, you know, I, I see this one as being one that, that the switch will flip at some point. And many times it just takes an analyst, you know, to come out with a price target, boom, you know, get coverage, initiate coverage at you know, one of these, you know, big firms and then boom, these stocks will go. So a lot of times, you know, people don't need, people have no idea. And most people don't know what the heck's going on here with, with uh, UMW, with UWMC. Most people don't know. Clove, most people don't know. Um, but it just takes that, you know, more coverage, a price target, boom. But if we dive a little bit deeper too, I think if we look at Clove, there's some, there, if we look into some of their filings, some big insiders, and there's been some insider buys, there've been a lot of institutional buys. So what does that tell you? The big money is buying. While the stock's dropping, the big money's buying these stocks. And somebody who bought in because they got hyped up at 16 is probably panic selling right here under 14. That's just kind of how the nature of the game works with a lot of these specs. That's why, you know, a lot of them, there will be, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's clearly like when, when people start 
freaking out about about clove that's when i started buying it like i i missed the entry early on people started freaking out because it was dropping like under 16 i was like okay i'm gonna start buying it i missed it so now I, that's how i that's at least how i do it um trch let's take a peek at crch i haven't paid attention to this guy i've traded before but i haven't you know recently been watching this guy trch is absolutely grinding up let's see um after hours it did push up to over you know up over eight percent so it pushed up to 188 here on Friday, pulled back towards the end of the day. Where are we at? Let's look, take a look. We always look to the left. So this thing was a beautiful buy back in here. It was nuts back in like uh, October. So we're up here towards some resistance points. So two bucks is going to be key. If he can break over two bucks, Torch could, you know, could be a, a bigger player or make a bigger move. So these are, you know, we have some highs. So we have like a 185, you know, we got a 196 and then a 198. So those are kind of key areas to watch. Uh, but as long as it puts in these higher lows, this is still looking, you know, solid. You know, honestly, as long as it keeps uptrending and putting in higher lows, I'm personally not someone to buy it up here, but that's just my style, my strategy. Everyone, you know, has their own, has their own strategy that works for them. So uh, let's see. Um, NVIV. Let's see. NVIV. Boom. Um, this thing has been grinding. I played NVIV from like 60 cents and I scalped it up and down, up and down, up and down as it would kind of have these ups and downs all the way up to like 120 ish, I think. Uh, and then that's where I took it. Yeah. Okay. It went to 179. It closed at 179 in the aftermarket hours. Did I miss out on some gains? Yeah. Uh, but that's just how I play. I mean, I made whatever it was, almost a hundred percent you know, honestly, I made more than 100% because I was scalping it as well. So realistically, I made, you know, an, on my initial, you know, I guess, position size. Um, so that's how I do it. it. It just, it's getting over this point. So now it's coming up to this past area of consolidation, you know, two bucks is going to be resistance. So if you can break over two bucks, let's draw this line in. I know it's a bit small and we're getting, you know, we're looking at some of these charts, but two bucks, and then it has room, you know, chart wise up to like 250 ish, 269. It has a high there. So it's got some more room over too. And they haven't had a press release, right? So we, people are waiting on a press release too, I think, for NVIV. Um, so, you know, until you get a press, I mean, this thing could still go. But I think there's a lot of anticipation going on. So with the anticipation, you kind of have everyone going, well, you know, at some point you're going to get news and it's not going to just spike as much as you thought it may have spiked had it had been sitting here at like 60 cents. And that's one of those things with ATOS too. A lot of people are talking about ATOS now. Um, I traded it like two times in here for like, you know, 40% gains. I'm, I'm, I, I miss out. Yeah. But uh, I, I take my money and I, and I move on to something else that I, I can identify a better risk reward. Do they have a PR coming? Yes, most likely it's coming. They have a pretty, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on in the pipeline. So it just takes one PR to send the stock. But I think everyone's already kind of digesting that they're going to have a PR. They have, they're going to update on this or this or this. And so at some point, right, it will happen, but there's already enough people already in it with sell orders who will just immediately sell the stock the second it gets any momentum. And so it may only go to two, three, three bucks and it may not go to five, six, like some people were saying. I mean, that's just kind of ridiculous to be honest. Uh, they also have an S3. So a recent shelf offering on Friday for ATOS. What does that mean? Um, essentially they can offer. So they can do an offering. They did three offerings in the past like month. They are a dilution machine. So understand that the stock's running up. They did offerings. It keeps going up. They're probably going to do it again. The question is going to be, I talked about this this morning, is either the offering is going to come before they have any news. If they don't have news to drop right now, they're going to just do an offering like Monday or Tuesday, who knows, whenever, because um, they don't care. Uh, that could be a decent buy. Um, if, if you really wanted to get into ATOS, if you have to, had, you know, had to get in, uh, or they're going to have, they're going to drop news. The stock's going to go three, four, who knows how high it will go, depending upon the news, depending upon how it's digested by the market. Uh, and then they'll do an offering right after that, either like that day or the next day they'll do the offering. So they have like 10.5 million shares available to, um, to sell, I believe on the S3. So that's, uh, that's what they're probably going to do at the end of the day. Um, let's see. Um, NGA took some profits peak. I actually, NGA was on my list for a long-term play. Oh man. Okay. It dipped down. So I do kind of like that. Um, the bigger the dip, the better for this one. It was, it's on my list for a long-term SPAC hold, um, that I kind of like. So right now it's got some support. It's trying to hold up around this 27 ish area. So we'll see, maybe it, it's going to probably come down further. I think at least looks like it wants to, I mean, who knows? Maybe it comes down towards 25. 25 is a pretty solid round number to come down to. So we'll see. Um, I don't know. Other than that, you know, this is, I think this is a good longer term play in my opinion. 
So, um, let's see, CRSR. Uh, I think I've been seeing this one a couple times. Oh yeah, here it is, CRSR. Here's so for those who are looking at this one again, buy. It's consolidating right in this kind of range for right now. Buying towards the bottom of this range is of course better. But again, putting in higher lows, we have a 32, 50, we have a 34, and now right now we have a low here at 35.30. So it's looking really good, and I think it's going to eventually break out of this consolidation and make a run to its highs. That's what I see. Bullish on the on the um, you know on the sector, bullish on the stock, honestly in general. Um, Fisker, yeah, Fisker's funny. Uh, I trimmed it on my position in it because it's it's just not going to move right now. Let's be honest. It's 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 a stock that okay, if when they come out with more news, when they come out right like you guys are saying in the in the chat with they need PR, they need news, they need something, right? So until that happens, it's probably not going to do much, and it's probably going to slowly even just fade. It's got support here at like 1450, so it's I got a lot of lines. Don't you know worry about these lines too much. I can honestly get rid of some of these just to kind of clean things up. Um, but that said, support 1450 for right now, roughly um, until we get some more updates, and they don't have production until 2022. So if we get you know Lucid and we get all these other things going public, right? These EV plays. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's it's kind of you know taking away from Fisker because these 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 cars are on the road. Someone can be driving or whatever and see the literal car on the road. It's so much easier. Oh, I'm gonna invest in that company. I, I, no one knows about Fisker to be honest. They, they did back in the whole like beginning of the SPAC and the EV hype a few months back when it got crazy. Um, but you know, I don't know. I'm still holding some though because I think it could be a decent. It could be a decent longer term play. Could be, but it's a long long term play. Um, it's really probably not going to move unless we get a crazy EV, just not crazy, unless we get continuous EV, you know, moves to the upside um, just continuously throughout the next year, which I think a lot of people are expecting with, you know, Biden and with, you know, how he's going to, how we want to move forward, I guess, um, more EV, right, which is kind of how everywhere, everywhere across the world, China, US, everything's kind of progressing. Yeah, maybe this thing slowly uptrends, but it's not going to make massive moves. It's not, it's just not going to do that. Um, so we'll see. Um, let's see, let's see, what else? IDEX. IDEX is one of those stocks that I know a lot of people have been talking about. It's just one of those that's a cult stock, I guess, if you want to call it that. You know, people just, there's a cult behind it for whatever reason. Not not to, not nothing against anyone who's in it, but, you know, it's it's putting in higher lows. I was looking at IDEX, to be honest, on Friday, like, you know what, like, it doesn't look terrible um, because it just, it's strong. It's looking pretty strong. So we got these higher lows being put in, right? We have this low right here, 270, um, a higher low to, at like three bucks. So maybe three bucks is your max downside risk. I wouldn't want to see it go below three to continue this pattern. It looks like it's making that U shape, a slow U, back on up to this 475. So it's got another dollar twenty-five to go for that new kind of new high. But if it gets up there, then five bucks is usually a very strong resistance in a lot of penny stocks. You know, it can make a pretty decent breakout, right? So I, I kind of I don't I not I think I mean I I wasn't a big fan of IDEX like months ago. But I, you know, that was months ago, and, and I guess times have changed, right? So rough, rough trend line for now, I guess, if you want to put one in. So that's that. Um, nothing against Colts. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that thing, a lot of these Colt stocks, too, is is they, you know, they, they run at the end of the day. Like, they, they get their runs at some point. Um, I actually honestly wonder if IDEX has a decent short float. Let's take a peek at IDEX. 18.8 it's not bad i mean it's a decent amount so it's pretty decent so it's almost 20 percent short so it could get a little little squeeze action there um on idex do they have any news um i think they have recent <laughs> don't get sucker into idex stock on the 15th they have i think they had some re somewhat recent news but nothing crazy uh srne let's take a peek at this bad boy srne boom boom okay so it, it bouncing off these uh this fifth uh this 200 simple moving average here on the daily chart so that's beautiful support at least lately so bounce off of there it's nice extension up from about 750 up towards 10 plus so it's got it had a decent pop now it's trying to come back down so let's see if it holds up around 935 or why 935 because this kind of low back on here on the 19th or it comes down towards like nine. These highs right here are just shy of nine. If it comes down towards nine, technically speaking, I kind of like that. Um, it's a better entry. And these moving averages are going to be slowly creeping on up. So if these are going to be support areas, they're going to be slowly creeping on up as they, you know, they slowly move up because they're kind of calculating the stocks, you know, being above it, right? So they're going to be pushing up um, as well. So I think that could be decent. Um, another thing to watch is some Bitcoin plays. Uh, BFARF, let's take a peek at that. BFAR, 
Where is this guy? B F A R F. Bitcoin OTC play, but I mean again, this thing. Okay, putting it. Let's see if it puts in a higher low. So we have a support around 182 ish. We have it's put trying to put in a higher low, maybe like 225 area is where it kind of holds up. Um, but that said, we kind of need Bitcoin to make another move. So let's take a peek at Bitcoin. What's it been doing? Uh, Bitcoin is is kind of consolidating now down here around the low 30s. So I don't want to really see Bitcoin drop below 30,000. If it does, it could it has probably a decent amount of room down. We'll see. Um, I'm not a Bitcoin expert by any means. I mean, we had this consolidation triangle right here. This pennant, we broke out to the downside. That's that's always a risk. So you, you like to look at these types of consolidation patterns for a breakout to the upside, maybe, or a breakout to the downside. And everyone wants to play the bull game until, you know, the bears win. And the bears seem to have won um, to the downside, at least for now. So we'll see. Bitcoin's going to be crazy, I think, because it's, it's going to come down to some big, big money. I think some big banks and some big firms and stuff that are, you know, either going to come out and say, hey, you know, we're, we're going in on uh, on Bitcoin, you know, and they're going to be putting in some big time money, like billions and billions of dollars, or, you know, or that's not going to happen, or we're going to get some more fear. I think Janet Yellen is saying, hey, like, you know, this this is like, uh, this is a scary thing because it's it's promoting or it, it, it's helping criminal activity, whatever she's saying. I don't think it's that's a big deal, honestly. I think that, that she's just too old <laughs> to even understand. But again, I'm not I'm not a I'm not someone to be going massive in Bitcoin plays. But if Bitcoin continues to grind up, there's a lot of underlying Bitcoin miners and, and things like that that are gonna you know be grinding up as well. Um, let's see. Let me see. GSAT is up a lot, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I don't know the, du the due diligence behind it though. So that, that's the thing. Um, that's my only problem. Um, okay, here's the uptrend line. So if it can hold this line, okay, good. If it holds a dollar, generally a dollar could be a decent spot of, of support right here once you're above. So let's see if it holds a buck. And if it does, you know, maybe it makes a run back to, to 150 plus. Um, that's that. I haven't looked enough into the company to tell you what I, you know, longer term, you know, what I think. So I'm kind of just going off of technicals, you know, right now, which a lot of people don't like, but, you know, I think it's huge. I really think it's huge because if you don't know, kind of, if, if you're, if you're going to call yourself a trader, and you're going to be playing like short term, you, you have to almost know, you have to know technicals. If you're going to be a, an investor, it doesn't matter. You, I don't care if I'm investing in a company. I don't care. If I think it's undervalued. I don't care. I'm going to buy it right now and I'll buy it tomorrow. If it goes down, I'm going to buy it again. But if you're trading a stock, you have to kind of know your risks. You have to know your downside. You have to know your upside, you know, where you're looking at chart wise history, where's resistance, where's support, where does it need to break through, where if it, if it falls below, what does that tell us? And many times, you know, both things line up and to a degree in this crazy market. Yeah, you can see some crazy stocks that have no, you know, that realistically is, is GameStock a whatever $5 billion company. I mean, no, right? Whatever the market cap is suggesting these days. Um, but, you know, you, it doesn't matter. Volume will, will, will send it. Um, but, for example, like IFMK right here has got solid support, uptrending support. So if this thing comes back down towards the trend line, it's a good buy. It's a good support buy. And technically speaking, based on the prior history, based on what we've been seeing, you know, you're putting yourself in a better risk reward than if you're buying the stock up here around $1. Maybe it holds $1, but you're putting yourself in a much better risk reward down sub 90 cents for this stock for swing trade, right? Uh, and so that's at least how I how I how I go about it. We had a pretty decent. It's kind of reversing. So we had this downtrend since like March. We had this massive push up in March, right? It wasn't one of those, I guess, pandemic related stocks. Um, I was. Is this like a, this is a food delivery, right, or something like that? A food stock, um, supermarket chain, a Asian Chinese supermarket chain. Okay, so that's why. Massive push uh, back in March and then just downtrend. And now we have an uptrend developing. So I think this is since it's an Asian company, right? It's a Chinese company or no? Oh, it's, it's on Long Island. Whatever. Um, I think a lot of these things that we're seeing with, with what's going on now, a lot of these plays that were kind of plays back at the beginning of the pandemic, we're kind of in that same time period again. If you look to China, they're shutting down. They have more restrictions on what's going on. Um, so a lot of those plays are kind of, you know, whether we don't, we don't really know, to be honest, how bad it is in China, but... If you go look online a little bit, you'll see that they're actually building those kind of makeshift or temporary um, quarantine, like kind of huts or like hospitals, whatever they did that they did last time. Not huts, you know what I mean. Um, and so it's clearly like they have a pretty decent, you know, increase in cases right now. Um, whether the numbers make sense or not, I don't really care. But I think a lot of those Chinese plays are going to be hot. So the ones that I like are some of those Chinese online education plays. 
Um, AMBO is one of those that I've been in for a little bit, but I'd be scaling some out on this pop, but I think it's still going to have a decent move. Um, it's a low float stock, so down towards the trend line looking really good on AMBO. Um, CLEU is one that hasn't gone as well, I think, um, recently. Uh, hasn't made a pop, but look at it. It's got some solid support. I mean, look at this. Look at where it's sitting. I mean, this $3.60 has been solid support in the past, and it's got range to 10 you know, chart-based range of 10s. This is a potential doubler on a spike, on a new spike, obviously. And it's a low float. So, and it's in a sector that's potentially going to be hot as China's shutting down and how they have more restrictions and whatnot. I mean, I, I, I think this, that, that kind of is one of those conviction trades that kind of makes some sense. But again, again, risk-wise, technically speaking, I have my downside risk. I don't want to see this thing dropping below this 360. If it does wick down below, see some of these candles, how they have these wicks, these bottoms? Yeah, if it, if it comes below, sure, but I want to make sure I'm not going to cut it right away. That's why I don't have a stop. I don't have a hard stop on my swings because I swing. I don't day trade that much. Um, I'll put a, I'll be watching it. I'll put an alert. Okay, it drops below. Let me check on it. Is there news? Is there a reason why? Okay, and maybe it recovers. The market could be super red, and maybe that's why it goes down. Okay, is it a dip buy? I assess. Uh, maybe I buy the dip. I average down a little bit, and then and I go from there. And if it comes back and recovers and regains support here, boom, you know, you're looking just fine. So that's what actually what happened last week. It was dipping down. I was like, yeah, should I cut it or should I keep it? And then I was like, no, it's holding up. It's holding up. And it actually finished decent. It bounced off the lows of the week, and it you know, finished decent towards the end of the week, up towards, you know, 390, which I think is solid. I'm holding that support. And it's also kind of breaking out of this descending triangle, which is a really good pattern. You know, we were breaking out of that pattern, which I like a lot. So that's, uh, that's at least my, some of my thoughts on some, some potential hot stocks, I guess, sectors um, going forward. CIDM, um, this could have some more moves, but I played, I played CIDM off this trend line, I think, for a move from here in the 70s. I think I caught it in the 70s, and so maybe I caught it back in here to a dollar, and I sold it a dollar just below before a dollar, and then it dropped back enough. I was a decent dip buy after I sold, but... Um, that's what I did personally. It's up a lot. It's got resistance up around where it's kind of at this 360 or this 165. So risk reward here for me, it's not ideal, but could it go for a lot more? Yeah, it has, it has that range. It can go for a lot more. Um, and it's, you know, as long as it puts in higher lows, it's still got the momentum and attention right there. Um, yeah, also with CIDM, I know I have a lot of people have been talking about. I, maybe people, people probably know more than, than I do about what's going on with the company. I try to, I, honestly, not in a bad way, but I try to know less. I think knowing sometimes for, for someone who just trades them, because I think once you start diving too deep, you want to know what's going on cash wise, catalysts, things like that, what they have going on, what the company does. Um, to a decent degree for some swings to be able to go heavier and like I'm not going to go heavy in a stock I don't know what's going what the company does right uh, that makes no sense just because just because I see a good chart right um, but CIDM um, under 100 million float okay not bad we can see do we have any recent buys uh, recently we've had some sells so back in December we have some sells which uh, three three million shares four million shares so a decent amount of shares a director um, selling but he's still got a lot of shares still got 30 million shares I guess so it's not not the end of the world. Um, so that's that. Let's see what else do we have pulling up GEVO. I know a lot of people like GEVO, but I don't, there's, I, I've seen both sides to this guy. I mean, look at this monster. I mean, this is a monster, absolute monster of a move. Um, from, I played GEVO back a long time ago, um, back here and I got crushed on an offering and overnight, like midnight offering. They did that. I was like, really, you gotta be kidding me. Um, Ideally, it was a good buy the offering period, but didn't do it. So I, I took an L. On, well, actually, I didn't take an L because I ended up averaging down. So I did what I, you know, I managed to trade, you know, how I actually would, would recommend and tell anyone to do it. You know, why I never go full position here at, at, at any point. I was holding it. Ideally, when I saw the weakness below this trend line, nowadays I'll cut it. But ideally, I should have cut it, right? Um, was it cracked below this trend line? And a couple of days later, it starts coming down, down, down. Offering, boom. Midnight offering, boom, the thing goes down to sub 50 cents. But what did I do? I didn't panic. Yeah, it was, was it, did it suck? Yeah, I was down pretty decent in terms of a percentage wise um, for my, you know, for the position. But again, I don't go massive into one given position, so it doesn't matter. So I'm fine with that. And then I averaged down. I had cash on hand. I, I bought the dip. I actually think I doubled or maybe more than that my position at the time because um, I wasn't in massively here. Doubled it. The stock goes to 85. I sold it there and I actually, you know, my average, I got my average down to like 80 cents. So I actually ended up making money on the trade um, after being just in a 
dirty offering that was a midnight, you know, just wrecked me. <laughs> so there's ways to manage it. But when you're playing it up here, you've got, you know, significantly higher risk, I, I would think, than, than reward at this point in the game. Jivo's up over 10 bucks. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how much further it has in, in the tank, to be honest. <laughs> Jivo was an inside job. <laughs> Um, AKBA, let's take a peek. I mean, we, we looked at one earlier, but this is a, this one I, I would say is in a decent range. So here's my, my range. From 380 down towards just 225 is, a, is, a, is the range. I, I mean, if it stays in that range, it seems like a decent buy. I'm going to probably look into, because it's one of those that I'm, I, it's on my list. I think, yeah, it's on my list. So when it's on my list, the way that I, I identify what goes on the list is technicals first, and then I'll before I buy it, I'll, I'll do a little more of a deeper dive. So... How I'll start the deeper dive is I'll just go, okay, let's take a peek at what's going on here. We have 20% short, which just means we have a potential short squeeze coming if the stock starts pushing up. Okay, we look a little bit deeper. Do they have any insider buys, recent insider buys and sells of back in June? I don't really, don't think that matters too much. Okay, then I'll look in to find out what happened here. Why did the stock drop? Was it bad data? Was it an offering? Probably wasn't an offering. I don't know because that's a pretty that's too big of a drop for an offering. I would think um, probably bad data or something. And then we assess. Okay, what do they have in the pipeline? We dive into their website a little bit deeper, and and that's how I'll go from there. So that's kind of my my setup. Or at least what I'll do. Sometimes if I think I need to get in, I'll just buy a starter before I even look into the company because the chart looks too good. Sometimes I'll do it just for fun, if I'm feeling you know if I'm feeling good, but. You know, before I I get remotely um, heavier into the play, I'll make sure I kind of know what's going on behind the scenes a little bit. CIDM is a streaming business uh, launch on Roku. Okay, okay, um, and that stuff's been kind of hot, right? Fubo, Roku, that those are all those are all hot stocks these days. Um, so I can kind of see that. Um, take a peek at Check. Um, Actually, this one was where was this guy? This is this one was recently pushing up. Okay, here we go. So check for, is is holding up well. It's got a it's holding up support here at like one forty to one fifty is holding support. So if you're looking for a, a, if you if you like the play, you like what they're doing. You know, um, decent buy down here under like one sixty is a decent buy. Um, it seems like if as long as you have your risk in in line and you're not gonna you know hold this thing and and hold this thing down because you marry the stock, you know, then you're fine for a trade. I think it's decent. Um, it's 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 setting up like a decent play. Um, we kind of have this downtrend breakout and then we kind of honestly have a, a similar kind of setup again. Um, you know, we have less history, but we kind of have another downtrend breakout forming right now. Um, so we're kind of setting up. We're setting up. Um, CIDM spiked off of uh, July GS run. Um, GNUS, what what the days? I honestly don't even know. Um, let's pull this bad boy up. Why is it not pulling up? There we go. Let's see. So it pushed the two, and then it's kind of fallen back, but it's holding that 50 SMA, and it's kind of grinding itself again. So it's it's kind of still doing its thing. It's still putting in, I guess, higher lows. To be honest, it came to one dollar support for a while for September through November, and then pushed up to two. Beautiful trade if you had it a dollar. Yeah. Uh, and now it's holding that 50 SMA, so it's holding up, and this is it right now at like 142. So solid support for right now under that 142, um, and it's pushing up. It wants to get back over this 160, which is a prior area of resistance. So that's going to be a resistance right now. And we kind of showed it again on Friday. We got rejected in the low 160s. Um, so that's that. KDMN. Let's take a peek at that one. How is KDMN doing these days? So we had this kind of a rough line. I can get rid of that, to be honest, right now. Um, pushing up, and it's kind of just in this you know, fairly decent longer-term consolidation f uh, range, I guess, right now, um, where it's kind of, let's see if we can draw some lines roughly. Yeah, some, you know, I don't know. It's, it's not perfect. We kind of have a top area up around, like, you know, 5 to 550, and then, you know, bottom lines right here, bottom areas down to, like, 3, just under 4 bucks, down to, like, 325-ish. So not a huge, like massive percent mover, I guess, but it kind of, it, it's, it's kind of a, a, a bouncy one, I guess. So, you know, it looks, it looks like it's setting up for potentially wants to break out to the upside if it, if it can get some more momentum up, but it still looks like it's putting in lower lows and then lower highs roughly. So we're kind of somewhat in a downtrend in a sense, even though it's a lot of choppiness um, going on. 
Um, OPTT is one that um, I was in last week. Let's see. I want to see how this thing goes. I think it can go for a lot more, but we'll see what happens. It's it's kind of breaking out of this, 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 this these like ranges that we kind of had. So we'll see. I definitely sold some too early, but I mean, I had an average at like sub three dollars. So when I sold over four fifty, I was pretty happy with that. Um, and move on to the next. This is head of my style and strategy. I don't I don't marry these things, right? So. Um, you know, and I show, I, I, I put, I show every single week. So we go back to yesterday's video. Um, I show my P and L's for the week, every single week. I sh I've been documenting it every single Saturday. So the, this, there's actually a playlist trading stock to hundred thousand dollars. So September I started, well, I started that series in September, but I've been showing the, you know, for, for a long time. Um, from September, I think September 20th or something like that was when I started. So the goal is by September 20th of 2021 to have $100,000. And we're at 33,000 right now from 15. So we doubled the account, but it's not just, um, you know, so we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. It's been, it's been super hot. So taking advantage of stuff now, um, you know, has been, has been big, but that's, I showed it all there. I, I don't, you know, there's nothing to hide. I don't have a course for you at the end of the day to sell you to say, hey, buy my course. I'm not going to show you my L's, my, my red days. I, I can't, honestly, I can't wait to have a big fat loss, like a big fat red week and be like, here's what I did. Here's why it happened. Here's how I'm going to come back from this. Like, I want to do that so I can kind of show that stuff. And I, I have posted videos. I have a video on ADMP, how I got crushed on that trade, ideally if I held it or averaged down. Yeah, ADMP, I'd be up massive on it. But I took an L on that trade, you know, months back. So I, I share the I share the, the 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 red days too. I don't I don't just you know, at the end of the day, right? What do I? At the end, I'm not selling. I my, I'm not selling you a course or anything. So I don't have to be green every single day. It's not reality, especially as someone who's a swing trader. ABML is one that I forgot to look at this morning. Um, as a swing trader, you're not going to be green every single day. If you're day trading, then you know the the elite day traders are going to be green. You know, many many days. Like, they obviously will have red days, but again, even them, they're not going to have. They're not going to be green every single day. But swing trading, you can see more volatility, so you can have massive massive green days, but you can also have pretty big red days as well. So. Ideally, your green days on um, when everything goes right should be much larger than your red days, you know, but that's just the name of the game. Um, you said you don't go short. Um, I don't I don't short right now. I, cur I cur honestly, one of the things the downside is that I went to a cash account back when I like started, not started the challenge, but a couple of weeks ago, a couple months ago, I went to a cash account. So I didn't have to worry about day trades because um, the account was under 25,000. Uh, and now that I'm above, I would love to go back to margin, but it's going to take like six or seven days um, for the account to go back to margin. So to be honest, uh, I, I don't really want to to waste and miss out on, on opportunities. Uh, you know, that's that. Let's see. FRSX crushed. Let's see. FRSX has been grinding up. I know people who like this one long term, but it's also, I think it's a pretty, it's a fairly risky fairly risky play, especially technically speaking. It's a fairly risky stock up here. I mean, it's up around, I, I want to see what I, well, I, I would like to see is like, for example, FRSX, you know, back in here would have been a decent, you know, time. Now it's tougher when it's happening to identify this, like, okay, where am I buying? Where am I selling? Um, you know, but this is what you want to see. I want to see a period where it just kind of consolidates, hold support, 380, 375 with support here. That's a better spot for an entry. So maybe it runs again, but it's just tougher to identify an entry point, um, at least for me. So maybe it kind of holds up around nine bucks. Maybe it comes down to like 650 or seven and it consolidates there. And that's a better, you can, you know, identify that as a better area easily. Um, TBLT is, is, a, is one that I'm pissed about because I, I kind of moved on from TBLT. <laughs> and then guess what happened in the past like three weeks? It's been running up. TBLT I liked for a while um, and it had some good news, but it just never like caught. And then now in 20, once like the, the year changed from 2020 to 2021, like literally just look at the chart, literally like the first day of 2021, we, we broke, we pushed up a nice percentage and we haven't looked back since just putting in higher lows, um, ever since. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, if you got in on FRSX, um, you know, weeks ago, you're looking great, obviously. And um, for those who are, I'm um, concerned or interested about the game. Let me just pull it up. I'm curious to see what's happening right now. 2412. So Chiefs are doubling up. But we have um I'm currently I'm currently in Austin, Texas, and we have a, a Bills bar, like right literally like right outside, like down the street from where I live. So it's kind of funny. I hear all the screams going on. Um yeah, AYRO and KNDI. 
No, I, I appreciate I appreciate you bringing those up actually because you know what these are ones I'm I was looking at ARRO to be honest. Um, low flow, decent support, decently short. I actually if I was gonna take one, it would probably be ARRO right now. Um, 50 SMA support again. It's just a trade, not not a long term investment, right? So at the end of the day, we're kind of in this range from the 750 down towards this 50 SMA, and I like I absolutely love when these stocks come down for the first time in a while. So. The 50 SMA, when a stock's been kind of like this blue line, okay, that's what this is, on the one-year, one-day chart. When a stock's been bouncing around, up and down, crossing above it and below it, it has less kind of, uh, it, it, it's less like worth looking at. But right now, when a stock hasn't touched it in a while, so this stock ran up and it was up massively and then slowly come back down. So the first time it touches it, which it came down to this week and it bounced off that level, Usually it's a pretty good bounce point. So I actually kind of like this. I like this thing, honestly, under seven bucks for a decent entry would risk it down to the 50 SMA. So wouldn't hold it below that point. This is kind of how I would identify the trade. Oh, let me put it on the list because it was on the list last week uh, for a trade and I just didn't take it. But with EVs, you know, I think this is, this, is, this is one of those EV plays that could get hot and could catch some, you know, fire again. And it was a stock that ran up a lot in the past. So let's pull up, where is it? A Y R O. Let's pull up, see if we get so many... Um, any numbers, short float and whatnot. Okay, so yeah, here we go. 33% short, 11 million float. I mean, this thing is going to probably move very fast once it gets going to the upside. Um, so yeah, uh, I like that. Um, let's see. Where is, uh, what is KNDI? KNDI. Let's, I haven't looked at this, one, this chart in a little bit. Again, similar setup, right? Not this 50 SMA bounce, but right, we had, we had like two spikes and now we have this trend line right here that's been holding up. So if it comes down a little bit more, I would actually like it a little bit more if it came down, but it may hold up around eight bucks. If it does, you know, and, and, and AURO, Solo, all go, KNDI is one of those that kind of runs this in, in sympathy with a lot of those plays. Um, so let's pull up KNDI and see how much um, of the float is short on this guy. Similar, 35%, a little bit higher float. They've done some offerings, I think, too. Um, higher float, so you can probably be comfortable going in heavier on um, KNDI, I guess. Personally, I mean, usually when you see a, a higher float, it's not going to be as volatile, generally, unless there's bad news. So this is another one. So AYRO and then KNDI, I'm putting on my list um, as if they have, if, if we see a red day and these things dip, um, decent entries if I, need a, if I need a little trade. So I like those two, actually. Um... Yes, this is another live because what I did was that we I, I people I put a poll out saying like hey like would you rather a morning live or a night live or a midday live because like playoff games and stuff um, and I kind of it was like kind of split on morning and after and night so I figured might as well do both what am I doing it's like a rainy day here so I figured why not just do two for like an hour so we're probably gonna wrap things up in a few minutes but um, you know I figured why not and then the thing is the uh, these are all these these all stay up on the on the channel so you can go back and watch them from the beginning or whatever you want to go through and kind of you know skip through and stuff hopefully it's helpful cpsh and this is for those asking <clears throat> this is using weeble this platform that i use is weeble it's always linked down below to get four free stocks the shameless plug right but i i use the platform so what i think is funny with a lot of people is that a lot of people who um you know this thing had like a pump i think from three to freaking 1180 that's, that's a crazy move I, I don't know what happened here i don't know what's behind the scenes but um let's see so it seems like it's i guess uh provides material solutions transportation okay i would need to do a little bit more diving through but but that said it looks like right here is a decent spot that is trying to hold up right around this point so from 830 down to like 782 that 50 cent range seems to be support for right now not much chart history to go off of but seems to be uh, but the thing with like people, I think it's funny. You got like, I, I, I watch videos and that's the other thing too. The stock market game has been bad on YouTube because it's unfortunate of what the algorithm promotes. And that's the name of the game with a lot of this stuff is that the algorithm promotes top stocks to buy right now. Like hurry, like don't miss these massive 7,000% runners. Like no one knows that's going to happen. But unfortunately that's kind of the name. And a lot of people are getting caught up in that stuff. And a lot of people are going to get crushed once the market takes a turn because it's not going to be hot forever. And they're going to, and, and I'm sure people are getting crushed nowadays, even watching those videos because you buy a stock that's already up you know, hundred percent in the past two days. Someone doesn't know that, you know, someone who's new doesn't know that. And they're just down hundred, they're down like 30% immediately. Um, it, it's not good. 
But the best part is when like, I love when people promote something, right? That they don't even use. So like the things that I have, like in my description stuff, I don't have a course, right? I don't want people to, it's already hard enough to, to be profitable, right? For most people trading, investing is a whole other, other story. Just buy and hold an index fund, like buy VOO and just literally like look at VOO. Um, sorry to go on like a rant, but literally just buy VOO. Look at the past like history of this, of this thing, you know, over the past like X number of years, right? Okay. It's going to model the S and P. So yeah, you had a, a dirty dip, but that's when you buy more. Right. Um, and this thing, just buy this thing, you get a dividend and it's going to model the S and P and you're going to make X percent per year, like eight to 12%, whatever the average is per year. That's it. Uh, and you don't have to worry about it. And that'll compound your growth. You compound your gains. You'll be a millionaire in X number of years. If you put to pot, if you, if you invest X number of dollars and so you don't have to worry about it, there's literally like that, but then, then there's everyone who wants to do it faster. And that's kind of the nature of everything these days. Everyone wants to do it faster and you could do it, but it's a lot harder to do consistently. So a lot of people are going to get caught up when we enter like a bear market or we have a dip or, you know, something like that, you know, We'll see what happens, but I think it's funny the people that promote like, you know, Weeble, but then they're like using Robinhood. Like, <laughs> you're like, what are you doing, dude? And like, I, I mean, I guess I get it, but like uh, maybe use the platform that you actually promote. I don't know. That's just my, that's how I think about it. Um, okay. But sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. I am not currently in Fubo. I wish I was. I, I, I will. I, I was in Fubo. I, I made the, the Fubo run from like nine bucks to, to 15 or 16. And I sold, I sold it at 16 bucks because I wanted cash for something else at the time. And then of course I missed out on the massive move. Um, but I actually liked Fubo. I just didn't have any cash available to buy it. Um, the past couple of weeks, I do have cash in this account. I never, I always have like a third of my account cash roughly in my active swing account, but Fubo was probably one of those like longer term swings. That I'd rather buy and just kind of not worry about for like a little bit for a longer term swing. And if it made a run from 25 to 50, I make hundred percent. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably take profits and go to something else. But that's just how I, you know, that's how I do it. Could it go for more? Yeah. But that's me. Um, uh, I can't, I honestly can't wait to see what, ha- I, I'm pumped for the days and for the, 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 the turn. I'm pumped for like this, the summer market again, when nothing is running like it is now. I'm pumped for that stuff because I think there's going to be a lot of people who get crushed and it's not like, I'm sorry to say that, but like, it's going to be great to kind of sift through the BS and to sift through kind of who's trying to put out good stuff. Um, I try, I know that it's, it's, it's tough because you don't get, you don't get enough attention on stuff that like you, you make a video, how to create a trading journal or like how to swing trade or like three swing trading strategies. No one honestly cares. No one cares. Even though you learn the strategies, you don't need to have that guy telling you what stocks to buy every day. Right. And at the end of the day, you learn the strategy, you do it yourself. You can, you don't have to worry. And so you can be on a beach, you can go to the mountain, you can do whatever you want and be swing trading yourself and do this stuff yourself, which is the, the ultimate goal of what I want people to be able to do right? Rather than just say, okay, here's three stocks and not know anything about them. And then just buy them and they go down and they're like, now what? <laughs> like, uh, you know, maybe you shouldn't, you know, you have to have some idea what's going on here. Um, PTE. And then we'll wrap things up. I'm sorry I've been rambling recently, but, uh, that's just how, you know, some of this stuff is kind of ridiculous that I've been seeing lately on YouTube. And I, and I, you know, I, to also, I feel bad, but like you have to kind of adapt, right? Or you die on, on a platform. So if you don't adapt to what's working in the algorithm, you don't, get any views you don't grow your channel dies you get just you kind of fall away and like i feel bad so i i try to like if i ever have to make like a a, a spammy title like that i still will try to provide decent value and just not saying here are three stocks that you need to buy and they'll double like i'm not going to do that I'll, <clears throat> I'll explain here's why there's support here there's catalyst here there's this here's a trade idea here's your risks that's kind of how i see it PTE support down around one buck. So this is actually good until it drops below one because then it's got a gap down to like 85. So if it comes down, this ascent, there's trend line support there. So that's kind of that, um, you know, that's it. Um, I appreciate, I mean, I'm sorry for rambling, but I, for those who, who understand and get it, I appreciate you guys for sticking through it because it's, this is, this is the name of the game. Um, renewable stocks are super hot for sure. Um, swing trading is also working. A lot of the, there's a lot of like, if you're someone who likes to day trade or chase, um, if you have experience, that's one thing. But if you don't have experience uh, and you're looking to day trade stuff, the day trade market's been a little eh, wonky. I mean, stuff runs, but like not everything runs. And so I think swings are really, really hot right now, um, personally. So that's where I mean, I'm sticking to. And eventually it's going to change. So eventually what I'm going to do is currently I'm waiting as like I 
I mean, I'm blowing past like the account that I'm that I have been building up has blown past PDT, but I'm still technically in a cash account. So I technically, you know, have to deal with, you know, unsettled funds and all that crap. So like at the end of the day, I kind of have to wait on on funds to settle. So, you know, it's it's kind of a, it's it kind of sucks, but eventually I'll change it back to Marjorie and I'll take a week off. I'll give myself a week. I'll just kind of reset. And then eventually like I'll do that once I realize the market's shifting, either we're going down, you know, through like a rougher patch, you know, I'm noticing a shift out of small caps, what I generally like to play into large caps. And then once I reset, I can use that week to figure out what's going on and then have a decent plan. So that's what I'm planning on doing. NOVN is consolidating. It's got, it's pretty volatile. Just understand that Um, it's consolidating right now. So I wouldn't want to see it dropping below at least uh, I would say right here, this 118, because this, oh, sorry, this like 118 area, roughly, because it was a prior area of resistance, which has become new support. So for right now, that 118 is your support line. Um, let me actually, I can get a horizontal line in there, which is probably better to, to use. And it's rough. It's not going to be perfect, but it's a rough area. So give it, you know, give it a few cents up or down, roughly. That's how I would play it. Um, if not, it maybe comes down towards like $1. It holds $1. Um, that's at least that. Um, market overall. Yeah. So, um, let's see, let's take a peek and then I'll wrap things up. Cause it's been another hour. This will, this will be up on the channel so you can go back and watch, you know, whatever you want to watch, um, through the beginning, the beginning, I talked about exit points, how I situate my exits. I mean, as of right now, I mean, everything looks good up about a, a quarter to a half percent across the different indexes. So I think we're looking good for another, another decent day. I mean, we had these, a dip on Friday. So it seems like every dips followed by another rip and we'll see if we hit all time highs again. Um, personally, I like, I would love for the market to just kind of like sit in this range where it's like, we have days where like it goes up, the overall market like spies up a half percent. The next day it's down a quarter percent. Next day it's up a quarter percent. Next day it's down a half percent. I would love kind of more of that, just kind of consolidation or, or a slow grind up. Um, and I think with everything that's been going on, we kind of have, you know, I mean, we kind of have a, I, I would think we have less kind of crazy catalyst to spike things unless we get some news out of the Fed or there's like, you know, this that's like, hey, we're going to increase rates. And then all of a sudden, oh my, now what? Like, you know, you can see kind of everything shifting. Or we get that news that they're going to start taxing um, unrealized gains. I mean, I don't want to get into that stuff, but that would throw an absolute wrench into the markets for sure because there's proposals of that. And I'm not, this is not political, just kind of because we all do this stuff. And so, okay, this would affect us, right? Picture being taxed on unrealized gains. Now, I guess for me, it's not as big a deal because I'm in and out of stuff. So I anticipate paying taxes on my gains no matter what. Um, and I'm going to have a video once I do that. I'm still kind of procrastinating on doing that. Once I pay my taxes for this year, um, I'm going to have a video on like how I did it and things to, diff things to kind of, I guess, avoid whatever pros and cons. Um, but, you know, and picture someone who has like a big chunk. I mean, who knows how this is going to go? Picture someone who has a massive chunk of change invested, you know, who makes $50,000 a year, whatever they make. They make a solid salary. Like they, they live off that money. They're fine. They're doing well. And over the past, you know, 10 years, they've been building wealth, right? And they've been buying stocks, but they haven't sold. They're buying index funds. They're buying stocks like Apple. They're not selling those stocks. Picture having them having to pay taxes on those gains. I, that that's just I, I don't know I, I don't I don't think that makes some sense and it wouldn't matter for like day traders because they're in and out they don't care they're paying tax no matter what but for somebody who's not selling who has massive unrealized gains that's not good I don't think that's good so who knows if we get some crazy news like that or there's more rumblings yeah could that send the market down sure but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon um, so we'll see uh, I appreciate you guys all for tuning in uh, let's see what's going on with the game right now we're in the fourth quarter yet no 31-15, looks like the Chiefs are probably going to, you know, they're, they're, they're solid. They're going to take this one home. They started off a little, little rocky, but they're going to take it home. Um, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. This will stay up on the channel so you can go back and watch it. Um, if you missed the beginning, I talked about exit points, how I kind of exit trades. Go back to this morning's live. The first like 10 minutes, five minutes, I talked about entries and risk management. So hopefully that stuff is helpful. If you got something out of it, make sure to leave a like on the video, like in the chat. I appreciate you. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Stay green. Market looks green for now, so we should be looking good. Um, but that said, I'll let you guys know at least if anything changes, anything drastic happens, uh, I'll make a video on it. So thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one.